the word you hear that cleanses your mind when your mind has been cleansed your life is holy if you are not taught who christ is you cannot live an effective christian life there is no other honor greater than that of sonship worldliness is the trap that enslaves men to the devil relationship with god is a gift fellowship is a choice the true expression of divine love is forgiveness to others what you pursue is an expression of what you desire now the just shall live by faith but if anyone draws back my soul has no pleasure in him but we are not of those who draw back to perdition but of those who believe to the saving of the soul the life of the just hallelujah he says the just shall live by their faith the just shall live by their faith you hear me child of God every Christian is ordained by the presence of Christ in him to walk in the reality of the glory of God on earth. When a man says, I am a Christian, you are saying that Jesus Christ is in you. And by virtue of the presence of Jesus in you, your life must be a reflection of the glory of God. He says, Christ in me, the hope of glory. So every Christian has been ordained by reason of the presence of Christ in them to walk in the reality of the glory of God. Not in the explanation, in the what? Reality. Reality means in the experience of the glory of God. When men can look at you and your life is a full reflection of the glory of God. Hallelujah. But for this to become a fact and a truth in your life, you must have understanding of certain spiritual truths. So, I desire by God's, not just I desire, I agree with God that I have to walk in the glory, but there are certain truths I must know. Are you following me here? Listen to me. The scripture contains the body of truth that provokes and sustains the grace and glory of God in the life of a Christian. Take note of that. So, everything that I need to live and walk in the glory is in the scripture. So, every time I read the scripture, I have an understanding. I said that for us to experience this glory, we have to know certain truths. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It means you shall know me and your knowledge of me will give you freedom from the power of the devil. So, we don't have to be in bondage. We don't have to live a life that does not reflect God. But this life we want to live is, at the, is a function of the truth we know. That is why it is so important that as a Christian, you give yourself fully to the word of God. Are you following me here? I said the scripture contains the body of truth that provokes and sustains the grace and glory of God in the life of a Christian. So whenever we have, we read something in the scripture, when we open the Bible and have access to a revelation or a mystery, we must have understanding of it so we can walk in the experience of it. How many of you want to see God in your life? Say, Lord Jesus, open my heart to your word. Say, Lord Jesus, open my ear to your word. Open my heart to your word. Now, look here. It says, the just shall live by their faith. The just shall live by their faith. And um, it is important that you take note of this scripture. Because if you are born of God, justified by the blood of Christ, you are ordained to live by your faith. The just do not live by money. 
They just do not live by human connections. They live by their faith. Whatever they experience, whatever they have, whatever they enjoy is a function of their faith. The just shall live by their faith. It's very important. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4 verse 8 when he, he responded to the devil with scripture and said man shall not live on bread alone but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Notice. So man can live by bread and man can live by the word. I will explain. When you are born of the flesh your sustenance is bread but when you are born of the spirit your sustenance is the word of God. Let me explain to you. In other words, if you say that you have received Christ as your Lord and Savior and you are not giving yourself to the word of God, you are denying yourself the experience of the glory of God. For man shall not live by bread. If you check our life today, our life is characterized with all of us, we are pursuing bread. And Jesus said, do not labor for what you will eat and what you will wear. And what you will drink for your father knows you need such things but seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added focus on your spirit are you with me so what are you born of is what determines what you will live by those who are born of the flesh they live by bread and those who are born of the spirit they live by the word say so your neighbor those who are born of the flesh they live by bread and those who are born of the spirit they live by the word tell somebody again those who are born by the flesh they live by bread and those who are born by the spirit they live by the word ask your neighbor are you born of the flesh or born of the spirit now listen this is very important So, in as much as your flesh requires bread for strength, your spirit requires the word for strength. If a man stays four days without eating, he will be weak physically. What happens to a man who stays weeks and months without having access to the word of God? Do you know what we teach first of all? We don't even teach for you to have things. This teaching is food of your spirit. Your spirit feeds on these words that we give to you to be strong. Because remember, Bible says, if you faint in the day of adversity, then your strength was small. Not your enemy was strong. Not the devil was powerful. So we understand from scripture that the devil takes advantage of the ignorance and negligence of Christians to afflict, oppress, and torment them. When you, on, when you know the word of God is food. So when you stay a whole day without reading the Bible, you are starving yourself spiritually. And you become weak. Very soon you start having dreams. Man of God, I had a dream. In my dream, they were following me. Those dreams are all signs of your spiritual weakness. It doesn't mean the serpent was strong. When you have a, if every dream you have, they are always following you. It means your strength is small. Those dreams are not nightmares. They are revelations of your spiritual state. They are proofs that you are weak in the spirit. They are signs that you need to press on more to have more knowledge of God through his word. So we understand it is very important. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Then Paul now says, the righteous shall live. He didn't say by faith too. By their faith. By what? Now, he said the just. The who? The just. Who are the just? The just are people who are born of the word and the spirit. Now, we are justified in Christ not by our prayer or our fasting. We are justified by our faith in the sacrifice of Christ. Which means, no matter the sins you have committed in the past, when you say, Lord Jesus, enter my heart, I accept your sacrifice for me. You are To be justified means, God has 
set you free from your sin. For example, a man has a court case. And let's say a man is a debtor of 20 million and he's carried to court. When he goes to court, somebody comes and pays the debt for him. He has been justified. He was justified without paying the debt because somebody paid for him. Are you understanding me? So, everyone that has confessed, when you acknowledge the lordship of Christ by the confessions of your mouth, you are justified by the blood of Christ. When you say Jesus and from your heart, Jesus come into my heart, I believe in you. When you say that prayer with faith, if you don't believe, doesn't but if you believe, you are justified. Which means all the things you did in the past, wickedness, sin, God says from that instant, they no longer stand. And don't forget that the strength of the devil is to accuse men. They call him the accuser of the brethren. Now, if Satan is an accuser, what does he use to accuse men? They are, they are sin. It is very important that you understand that you have been justified. Are you listening to me? You have to understand that you have been justified. Because there are people in church today, they are trying to justify themselves by their works. The Bible says we are justified by the blood of Christ. Romans 3, 23, 24. It says the wages of sin is death. Verse 24 says that we are justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. It means the blood of Jesus has washed you of your sins. In the book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 to 6, God said something which is recorded. He says, Him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his blood. He did not wash us from our sins in our prayer. He washed us from our sins in his blood. So it is important that from today, you, when the devil comes to accuse you, tell him, I am justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Not by your prayer. Let me explain. When you don't understand that you are justified, you will constantly be attacked by guilty conscience. And guilty conscience is a strategy of the devil to torment you of a sin that God has forgiven you in Christ. And every time you open to this, you become an easy prey for attack. The devil can easily attack you. You sit down and he constantly brings a remembrance of your wrong. Constantly brings a remembrance of your mistakes. And when you get in that place in life, you see people walking, what is it? I'm a sinner. Um, I did the abortion. Uh, I lied. Yes, I did all those things, but I have been justified. Are you understanding me? Now, if you don't start from this foundation, you are not working with God. You must start from there. There are many people in church who have not accepted that they have been justified. So they come before God with fear. Thinking that maybe God wants to kill them. When they have a, a, an issue, they say, ah, maybe God has not yet. So people ask God forgiveness to the 50 times for one thing. Father, forgive me. Maybe I didn't ask for you. Well, and let me need that and I ask for it. You need that and I, Father, forgive me. All those postures is not what brings forgiveness. Hear me very well. The sacrifice of Christ on the cross is what purchased the forgiveness of God for our sins. We are forgiving only because Jesus dies on the cross. Don't try to do anything else. It will not work. So if a man desires forgiveness, he must entirely base his faith on the blood of Christ, not on himself. Do you know there are people who do mistakes and they feel like, I want to go and fast for God to forgive me. You want to go and fast for God to forgive you. That is wrong. You can go and fast for to subdue your flesh to the power of the Holy Spirit so you can walk in holiness. Forgiveness is a free gift given to you by the sacrifice of Christ. You don't pay for it. You, you, oh, that is why you receive it in your heart. Are you following me here? Now, your man is reconciled with God by receiving the forgiveness of his sins through the blood of Christ. If you have not yet come to that place, hear me, many ever of us, you know, many of us have done things in the past. Until you realize that God has forgiven you, Satan will keep tormenting you. And when Satan lays hold of you with the thoughts of your past, he will afflict your present and torment you. 
and you will take advantage of your ignorance and afflict you, oppress you, make you feel sorrowful when actually what he is trying to make you see, God has forgiven you. That is why when you come to God, the first thing is not money, is forgiveness of sins. That's where you start. When you have not received that, you can receive nothing else. Are you following me here? Because forgiveness of sins is the pathway to your inheritance in Christ through righteousness. You cannot receive something else if you have not, if you don't say, My, accept it. Don't accept it. It is, it is pride to try to do things for God to forgive you. You don't fast for God to forgive your sins. I know you will quote that in the, uh, it is written that when David slept uh, with Bathsheba, he fasted for seven days. Oh boy, he was fasting for God to heal his child. You want to read it? That's why when the child died, he said, I'm not fasting again. And even if he was fasting for forgiveness, in his time, Jesus has not yet died, so he has to fast for it. But on that cross, when Jesus was crucified, he, he, everything he did was for you. So you can, the issue I say no, if you don't understand it, you cannot even be healed. Because they cannot be healing when there is no forgiveness of sins. They cannot be blessing. It starts from there. It is the foundation of our faith. The foundation of our life is to receive it. So many of us have, that is why one of the issues we have today in church is wrong teaching. When people come to God, they are introduced to money. No, you must be introduced to forgiveness of sins. You must now know that now that you are in Christ, your sins have been forgiven. This is a truth. From there, what happens? You have peace with God. You cannot approach God. Listen to me. We don't approach God on the basis of our anointing. We approach God on the basis of his love. When I want to pray, for example, I want to pray. I don't come and say, Father, it's me, your prophet. Oh. No, when I come to the place of prayer, I have a certain conviction that my sins have been forgiven because Jesus Christ died for me. Until you believe that thing, you are not yet a Christian even. You are still a church goer. Maybe you'll be converted today. People who have not heard that. So they spend their lives walking in guilt and fear and unbelief and doubt because, listen to me, it is impossible to trust in God with your whole heart if you don't have the understanding that he is loving and has forgiven your sins. If God is your enemy, why are you praying to your enemy? So many people pray from a standpoint of fear. They come to God with doubt in their heart. Not knowing that is that kind of standing that makes a man not receive from God. So there are people whom God calls the just. These are people who have been justified by the blood of Jesus. So when the Bible says the just, it speaks of people who have acknowledged the sacrifice of Christ on the cross and received forgiveness of sins. So who are the just? So can I ask a question? What can you do to be a just person? Go and fast for 40 days. 70 days. Ah, sorry, 210. What do you need to do? Acknowledge. From your heart. Romans 10, verse 8 to 10 tells us, verse 10 says, With the heart one believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So, who are the just now? Show me Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by, by what? We have what? Magabaya. We have what? We have what? Peace with God. True. Having been justified by faith. Say at the scripture. That's the voice of the spirit. It, it, we have peace. It is, this is a revelation of who you are now. Have you been justified by faith? We have peace with God. 
there is nothing better than that peace with God you know one time you know when I say God spoke to me one man of God pastor let me say pastor he said he, said, he was preaching he said all these people they were about to show God talked to me God talked to me they said God that they are not their friend that they are neighbor and I said to him I said if God is not your father he is my father don't use your life to judge my life I didn't say if God does not talk to him because God talks to him but he does not hear. That is his problem. So he wants me to be deaf like him but I choose not to be deaf. He says, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. We are, now, the man who wrote this was a man that persecuted the church. When they were killing Stephen, Apostle Paul stood there. He's the one that was guarding the clothes of those that were stoning Stephen. Apostle Paul carried letters. He put, he put them in prison. Jailed them. Killed some. But this man is telling you that have you been justified by faith? In John chapter 8, they met the Lord Jesus and said, Lord, this woman sinned. And according to the law of Moses, when, a, when someone is caught in adultery, they have to be stoned. What do you say? And Jesus said, he who has no sin should be the first to cast the stone. He didn't say stoner. He didn't say don't stoner because he will solve the matter. You will not go to our time. For there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus that walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. You have been justified by faith so you have what? Peace with God. You must accept it. Receive it accept it let it be your reality that you have been just that you you have been justified so when you come before god there is no fear no you come before god you say oh god no why will god drive you you have been justified by faith now this is where this issue if our justification is by faith then our life and our sustenance will be by abiding in faith. Because you were justified by faith. Now you have peace with God. Ah, if who is Satan to bring me down when I have peace with God? If I have peace with God, then my enemy is the enemy of God. No power, no power can bring you down. Can I tell you something? The only person that can bring you down is yourself. Because before the devil can successfully operate in your life, you give him permission by the content of your heart. Either worry, fear, or doubt. He says we have been justified by faith. We have peace with God. Peace with God. Don't allow any thoughts of your past bring you in bondage. Don't allow any fear of the past bring you in bondage because the Holy Spirit is telling you that you, with everything you did in the past, you have been justified by faith. Now you have what? Peace with God. So, those who have been justified by faith are those who have been given access into the peace of God in Christ. What a this peace cannot be taken. Jesus said, my peace I give you. Not like the world gives you. There is a peace in our hearts that does not come from the things we have. It comes from the presence of Christ in us. Nobody can take it from me. Not sickness, not trouble, no power. I have come to believe in the Lord Jesus and I've understood something mighty. Heaven and earth will pass away. But his love is everlasting. So many of us, we are walking with shame in our heart because the devil does nothing but remind you of your mistake. But that's not how God sees you. That's not how God sees you. Human beings, they will call you according to what they know of your past. Say, that's not that prostitute. But God says she's justified. So in the eyes of God, the one whom you call prostitute, Mary Magdalene, 
God says she's an evangelist. All what you say is not what God is seeing. Because God sees people through the blood of Christ. When a man acknowledges the sacrifice of Christ, he, the blood of Jesus becomes the mirror through which God sees him. He is now clean, not for what he has done, but because he has accepted what Jesus did for him. Do you remember at the Passover, Jesus said, when he took bread, he said, take this, my body, which is given for you, not for me, for you. Then he took one, he said, this is my blood shed for you. The body given for you. The blood shed for you. So everything he did was for you. That what should happen to you? That you now can have peace with God. When you have peace with God, eh, eh, blessings follow. Everything you need follows. What is most important, what is required is that the man should come to that place where you come and lift your hands before God. And the guilt of your past is no longer present. If you are still tormented by the guilt of your past sins, it is a sign that you have not received forgiveness for your sins. I did not say that God has not forgiven you, that you have not accepted it. And a man who has not received forgiveness of his sins cannot forgive another person because you cannot give what you don't have. Show me a person who is bitter. You know, some people are bitter, full of grudges and hatred. Don't blame them. There is no forgiveness in them. They have not opened up to the love of God. Such people are, they are their own tormentors. They are angry with the pastor, with God, with everything. They, they feel like they, nothing is against you. In fact, people don't even hate you. You are against yourself. Your heart is not at peace with God. So your heart makes you think that nothing is fighting you. That restlessness in your heart is guilty conscience tormenting you for your sins. If you come to Jesus, open heart, he cleanses you. Lift your hand and say, in the name of Jesus, my sins are forgiven. One more time again, in the name of Jesus, my sins are forgiven. Amen. That's it. He says, these men, the just, they shall live by what? By faith. So, there is a kind of lifestyle prescribed to the just. That if a man says, I am just, there is a lifestyle prescribed to him. If you don't ascribe to that lifestyle, you cannot enjoy the benefits of that justification. Don't forget that before God creates anything, God creates that environment of survival. Before God created the fish, he created this water first. Before God created the bird, he created the air. Before God created Adam, he created the garden. Before God created a new creation in Christ, he created the supernatural. Now, in the realm where you should live, is by faith. <clears throat> by faith. It now says, the righteous shall live by faith. Verse 39 says, he who draws back, God will not be pleased in him. Give that scripture, Hebrews 10, 38, 39. Let's work something a bit. Now, the just shall live by faith. But if anyone does what? Draws back. My soul has no pleasure in him. Who is talking? God. To draw back means to backslide. Look here. The devil being conscious of this scripture, his assignment is to give you opportunity to draw back. Every temptation and trial is the devil give you an opportunity to be discouraged in God and draw back. The reason why you go through what you are, listen to me very well, all these things you are going through, Satan wants to give you a, I mean of you he has worked. Some of you now come to church when you are happy. You, you are not hurting God by doing that, you are hurting yourself. You are not hurting the church. You are not hurting your pastor. You are hurting yourself. Don't understand this very powerfully. Some people don't even come. In fact, they come once in a while. But before, they will come frequently. And if you ask them, they have reasons. All those reasons you are trying to give is a proof that you have been manipulated by Satan. He says, he who draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. There is no reason to draw back unless you find yourself in a place where you will not please God anymore. This is not trouble. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So every temptation and trial is the devil giving you opportunity.
to draw back from God. That is why you are going through what you are going through. Satan is saying, ah, ah, are you still following God? Are you still serving him? Every problem is a question from hell. Are you still praying? So after you, are you not seeing how they, you see how you, they have rejected you visa, you are still praying. It is the voice of Satan. All the things he does, if you read Job, if you read the book of Job, there was a very mighty challenge. Satan said, God, if you take everything Job has, he will deny you. He will draw back from you. God said, go and take. So from the, we see that whatever the devil was doing in the life of Job, is not because he wanted to kill his children. He wanted to give him a reason to draw back from God. There are, there are some of us, Satan, less than what happened to Job, we have left God already. Hear me very well. When your commitment to God is based on the things he gives you and not on who he is, you will draw back in the day of trial. If you are following God because of things, when the things are not there, guess what will happen? Complain will enter. I've been serving God for years now. I don't have, it has begun. How can I be? I, I, I can I be? Hmm. This is nature so when I just fall, it has begun. Be careful. I have vowed unto the Lord, the most high God, that complaint will not proceed from my mouth. Because I, don't say amen, it is my vow. Make your own vow. Because I understand the pain, the error of drawing back. There are people who are so easily manipulated. Listen to me. Satan is alive. You think it's only Jesus who's alive? Jesus is alive. Yes, Satan too is alive. And Satan is walking. And he to and fro. Every day he has an assignment. He say you, you. Satan was a Satan has one assignment in your life to make sure you deny God. Not two. Satan does not. If Satan break your marriage, will he marry your wife? He, he said that he married. He only knows that where a man's treasure is, there shall his heart be. So everything the devil does from scratch, from from why you think. To up everything he does. There is one purpose for everything he does. Is to give you a reason to deny God. That is why you are seeing trials. That's why you are seeing this, all this temptation. So you ask yourself, but what have I done? Mm -mm. It's not what you have done. Satan is afraid of what you will become if you stand with God. <clears throat> Satan knows that if you continue with the faith, there are people who no longer pray. They need to pray. They began hot, hot, hot. Twelve, they are up. Like a baga, baga. Now, even if they put alarm, they wake up and off the alarm. Then the one who put it to, they write the alarm to pray. For click, click, it's time to pray. Oh, they off it. They off it themselves. But before, there was no alarm and they woke up to pray. It is no, alarm will not help you. The problem is in your heart, in your spirit. Once a man's heart has been drawn away from God, he lacks the, the, the ability to be committed in his service to God. Your problem is not, is not what you are going through. is that you have allowed what you are going through affect your heart. He said, let not your heart be troubled. In the world, you will have trouble. But let the trouble stay in the world. Let it not enter your heart. Because if it enters your heart, with your life you think this is a game before your eye open you'll be 90 years old and still be a failure you say yeah, i followed god for 40 years you followed god inconsistently you followed god by the flesh you were not consistent you kept drawing back when when this didn't come you draw back then you come tomorrow these people who you keep drawing back they cannot be trusted so god does not trust such people because they are not consistent in their work with god he said they the, the just are live by their faith and if they draw back my soul has no pleasure in them don't draw back. Let the pain come. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they stood. And the king said, if you don't deny God, I put you in the fire. They say, oh king, may you live forever. The God we serve is able to save us. But even if he does not save us, sir, we will not bow. The king said, eh? 
You challenge me? They say, we don't challenge you. We we'll tell you facts. And the king took them and put them in the fire. But I have not seen from the scripture, nor in our time, it will never happen. No man can stand for God and God does not stand with him. You are just being frightened. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, is it dead or is it shadow? Can't you read that in shadow? So all the things you see are not real. They are images created by Satan to, to frighten you not to continue in your walk with God. So the devil looks at you and you are becoming so strong in prayer. He just stirs up your husband and your husband begins to insult you, your church and your pastor. Be careful. Don't forget about your husband. Satan is trying to make you draw back. That's when your prayer should increase. You will become more angry. You will say this one. I will leave this case. Did the temptation of Job not end? <laughs> no man can be tempted forever. Eh? No, no man is not forever. But people keep prolonging their trial as they constantly small hits the drawback. Tomorrow they come back. They come and say, Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. They, come, they always come and confess their sins. They have they are children, babes, immature. They don't understand the power of consistency with God. Please sit down. And the just shall live by their faith. If he draws back, there are people who keep drawing back. So they no longer pray. They no longer study the word of God. They no longer do here and say, Master, see here, eh, I don't do good. The Lord says, for this life, so for do good, no good. Ah, for do good, no good. How can I talk that? Bible says, do not be tired in doing good. For in due time, you will receive your harvest if you don't give up. Do you understand me? Following God is good. Follow him. So, there must be a certain wisdom in your heart to understand that no matter what I see, no matter what happens, I don't have to draw back. I have one life to live. It's the life for God, for him. That is why he said the righteous man may fall. When he falls, he does not stay that he wakes up and continues because the just shall live by their faith. And if he draws back my soul, we have no pleasure in him. You can have give many reasons. Some of you, your reason is that maybe your pastor did not show you care. Did your pastor die for you on the cross? Now, I'm not saying your pastor should not show you care. But why will you allow a man who did not die for you on the cross separate you from Jesus who died for you on the cross? So your reason is not valid. It is your heart's condition. It's a wrong heart. But the issue you don't know is this. I tell you the truth. I have been preaching now for about 12 years. This thing that people, you can deceive man, you cannot deceive God. He said, God cannot be mocked. Some people, before their eye will open, I'm telling you, they will be, you will see that how people who came behind you, they have gone ahead, you are still in one spot. Tomorrow you are fine, tomorrow you are not fine. It is not Satan, it is your inconsistency with God and a wrong heart you have. If you don't repent of that kind of a heart, you will not be able to enter what God has planned for you. Become consistent, be consistent, be consistent. Stay with God. Stay with God. Stay with God. He said don't draw back. Don't draw back. Satan will give you reasons. He will come and speak to you. See, since you are following God, what has he given you? Tell him, even if he gives me nothing, the mere fact that he died for me, I will follow him. His death for me is, is my assurance that I have a place in his father's house. So even if I have nothing here, there's something I have above there. But not, not true, true, not say no. no man, no fee follow God. Then God, no blessing. You know, they lie. You know, they exist. Now, lie. Any man tells you they lie, you, you know, they exist. What are you, if you follow God from your heart, unless your heart is wrong, there is a reward for those who follow Him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. He said, We are not those who draw back. So remember this there will be trials, there will be temptations, but all of that 
are is the devil saying you, telling you, leave this thing of church. Leave this thing. Many of us have drawn back. Are you going to come back to God today from your heart? At least, are you, at least are you going to come back to church? Some people are here, their heart is as left since. I'm saying, are you going to come back to God? To come back and see that holiness is valuable. You can't say, a man of God, I've been waiting for, God, for a husband for 20 years, I've been praying and fasting. If no man comes, I just want to look for one man and just get pregnant and have a child. What are you saying, my sister? Are you saying that God is unfaithful? Are you saying that you are more righteous than God? Are you saying that you are more faithful than God? Are you saying that you are faithful and God is unfaithful? What do you mean by I have been serving God? I have been giving my tithe and he has not blessed me. Do, are you not afraid to judge God? Such statements should never come out of your mouth. It's a sign of pride and arrogance. And God resists the proud. When you trust God, they conspire against Daniel. And the people said, for one month, nobody should pray unless you pray to the king. Then you say, I will not draw back. I will pray to my God. His life was threatened. He said, I will pray. They say, if you pray to God, they kill you. He said, okay, let me pray and you kill me. That is, that, is where I, that, is, that is how the life I want to live. This is where I want to be in the spirit. A man's life, it been, many of us, we have drawn back when our life was not threatened. They say, if you pray, you die. He say, I will pray, kill me. Daniel knew about the lions then. And they said, if you pray, he said, I will put me there. Sometimes you begin to pray. As you begin your prayer, the next, that night, it's like demons of hell break loose. It's like, it's like they come and sleep with you. All those things they are doing. Now, because the prayer jam them. If the prayer may be jammed, they never come. They are trying to say, man, I don't know. Her. The more they pray, the more my thing they tight. Yes, as the darkness gets thicker, light will still break forth. So you pray. Hey, we have one life to live. Oh, pray, pray. I yaga about that. I say, what I talk? Pray, 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 pray. pray. Then pray again. Then pray again. Then pray again and pray again. Pray. Prayer is the response of a Christian to every threat, affliction, and trial in this world. When we are tempted or tried, we don't draw back. We press on because we know that he is with us. I am not alone. He said, even though you walk through the fire, I shall be with you. Even though you walk through the water, I shall be with you. He said, the Lord is, he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. So, although Satan is giving me reasons to draw back, I'll move ahead. Um, I'm seeing something. When you start the race, and on the, you run more than everybody. Then you stop middle. I say, Kai, I've run fast too. You will not be rewarded because you began the race. You'll be rewarded because you crossed the finishing line. Many, this is the word of the Lord, many shall fall on the way on account of trials and temptations. But those whose trust is in the Lord shall abide in him forevermore. Why am I seeing people who have turned back? God is asking you to turn back. Change your direction. There are things you had stopped doing. You have gone back to doing it because you feel like you have been in church for long. Your mistake, or maybe my mistake, is that maybe I told you that as you come to God, I should have told you that as you come to God, the first thing you will have is Him, not money. But when people's hearts, when your purpose for pursuing God is not right, you will be discouraged in the midst of trials and temptations. 
When a man's purpose for seeking God is correct, no matter what happens, he stays with God. Nothing can happen that can make him change his way. Because but when, you're, when you have, you know, I pray, I pray from my heart because when I stand and pray for churches, I, from this church to churches and I look, I see people who don't want to know God. People, all they want is to have money and cars and marriage. Yes, God will give those things, but it is important you understand that there may be seasons of life where those things are not present. You must be consistent with God. You must learn stability. Don't pray when you're happy. When you're angry, you don't pray. Is it like you and God, you find a boyfriend, girlfriend, something? You're talking about the almighty God. You're angry with God. How can you be angry with God? Angry with God. Ah, now wow. Things they happen. You're angry with God. Because you're angry with God, you don't want to come to church again. You don't want to come to church again. We are talking about your salvation or not his salvation. It is you who is being saved, not him. You make up your mind. I repeat this word. Nobody stands for God and God does not stand with him. Go and check from scriptures. Read about Esther. Read about David. Read about Elijah. Daniel. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Joseph. Show me one person that stood for God and God abandoned him. It doesn't happen. Even Samson that, that made mistake and slept with Delilah, when he prayed, God still gave him power to finish the Philistines. There is no man that stands with God and stands alone. It's not possible. You, are, you cannot be more faithful than God. So there are times, there are times I go on prayer line and I pray for somebody. Before, the person will not be here. I'll be angry. I don't do that again. When the person is not here, I go and ask God, Lord, is there any other thing I can do? You see, next time when you go and pray a line, don't touch her head, touch her leg. But before I was angry, hey, is the person not be here? God, Holy Spirit says, don't do that again. Because if the person was not here, it does not mean that God is unfaithful. It might be I lack the understanding of what to be done to help the person. Whatever, God is faithful. God is faithful. No man that trusts in God dies in the fire. The fire does not burn them. The water cannot drown them. They cannot die in the valley of the shadow of death. For they that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. <laughs> there is nothing of this world that can kill a man who is made from above. It is no day. Na fear. Na fear. Nothing no day. It's only fear. There's nothing. There is, I mean, there is, there is nothing. If human beings have charm, their bullet cannot enter them. You know who is God? Can I say something? Every trial is an opportunity to demonstrate the grace of Christ through faith in him. Which means that some things have happened to your life. God allowed those things to happen so you can shine through them, but you run. It was an exam that you run. Malakadabasha. Hey, Rugina. Adaka. I can remember, I remember one time. Oh, Shagiva Naski Bahanda. Longe Brendeshka. One time, a child died. And a child died. So they told me, I said, No, Barry, I'm not there. And I sat me. All of a sudden, <laughs> they carried a child and brought a child to my house. I said, how can I trouble this? But do you know why? You no, know, as we grow, we need to kill shame. For me, for pray for picking. And the thing that I say, if you know, woke up, it could disgrace me. You understand it, you know? But that was a wrong mindset. Because what if you pray, woke up? I went now. You came. So I came to pray like a small prayer, like, you know. Father, mercy. As I arrived near the boy, it's like current took over me and my mouth was no longer my mouth. Hey! In the name of Jesus, I speak life. And I saw I, the eye opened. Even me, I said, Jesus! <laughs> Wait, can I shock you? Can I shock you? Every 
come and see people kneeling down. You see, Jesus, they believe Christ on the spot. What the enemy thought you will use to disgrace me. You say, nobody saying they raised their prayer. Why that one no woke up? Who go the prayer? Someone no woke up, someone no woke up. Who go the pray? Who go the pray? I have stopped because I have begun to understand that some things are happening, they are divine set up for you to shine forth. But you don't understand, so you run. Sometimes you have been saying that God has called you, God wants to use you. So the day your auntie became sick, it is God that set it up. Go put your hand, make it where you fear. And if you have laid your hand on your sister or your aunt, palms will have gotten up, and your family will have believed the call of God in your life. But you were afraid, fear, and shame. There are manipulations of the devil to hinder men from demonstrating their faith. So they draw back because they were afraid. You do good, they hate you. You do bad, they hate you. Hey, so better they do good. Because what, what, whatever you do or you don't do we will still bring you hatred. There's nothing you can do. Sit down, please. Are you hearing me? So don't draw back. Don't draw back. Don't draw back. Stand firm with God. You'll oh yeah, come mashagi. Hey, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, gamando. Bible says, ah, yeah, yeah. They left Egypt and they came and stood. They stood at the bank. In front was the Red Sea. Behind them were the Egyptians coming with weapons of war. And the Ayamata. On this side was the valley. This side mountain. And they began to cry. And, and they were turning to go back and beg the Egyptians. Hi. No, they say, hey, stand still. And you will see the salvation of God. They wanted to draw back. God said, Moses, no. Tell the people to move on. I, I mean, God, are you not seeing the water? God said, move. Ah, yeah. Bible says, when I in, uh, he said, when the priest put their leg in the water, the water separated. The water did not separate when they prayed until when the priest put his leg. There are some things which will not open until you step there. Don't draw back. Don't draw back. If prophets of Baal are operating, they are Elijah's that can call fire. Don't sit at your camera. No power should make you stay in hiding. You confront them, you die. No confront them, you die. They're waiting. Confront them. Maybe you can confront and win. Don't draw back. Many of us have drawn back. We have stopped believing God for, for the things he promised us. It doesn't matter how many years it will take. Whatever God promised me, me, Kevin, and we believe to our leaf earth. I, I, I will never stop believing. Never ever. Even oh, Katama, Shkara, Hiskaba, there are things that God promised many of you that the devil has succeeded in making you stop believing your own breakthroughs. Things that God tell you, they are dreams and visions you had. You no longer believe again. Because once law, I told you, temptation and trial, you have gone through so much problem. You say, Master, no one believe me again. I want you to live my life. No. A life without faith is not life at all. The just shall live by their faith. So faith is the air we breathe in the spirit. Anyway, rise on your feet. There are people right now, you have to come here. The Lord is speaking to me that there are people as I just said that message. They are saying that they want to be justified. If you are saying that in your heart, and you realize that you often move around with guilty conscience and you want to enjoy free gift of justification. Stand on your feet wherever you are, whether it's the gallery, anywhere you are, and come and stand here. There is no fear and there is no shame. Come and stand here. Come and stand here. Wherever you are sitting and in your heart, you say you don't want to carry the burden of sin any longer. You don't want to carry the burden of the mistakes of your past. Satan keeps tormenting you with your mistakes. You can't sleep. You can't rest. Every time you sit down, he makes you remember the things you have done. Wherever you are, please welcome, sister. Come. Welcome, mama. Come. He who dwells in the midst of the cherubim shine forth. He who dwells in the midst of the cherubim shine forth. He who dwells in the midst of the cherubim shine forth. He who
whenever you are watching us, you can see hundreds of people now who are kneeling before God. I wonder wherever you are, you should not be ashamed to kneel before him. You don't have to carry this load. This load of the mistakes of your past. You don't have to carry it any longer. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, he died on the cross for you. God raised him on the third day just for us. You don't have to carry the load of the abortions, of the mistakes, of the fornication. You don't have to carry that load. He said, come unto me. All of you who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. He was not speaking of just rest from, rest from the problem you are carrying. Sometimes you cannot sleep because of your mistakes of your past. But this morning, Jesus is reaching out to you. Don't reject him this morning. Don't harden your heart to his voice. Don't harden your heart to his call. Don't harden your heart to his love. This morning he has ordained to show himself to you. You see all these hundreds of people here kneeling down before him. It's because their eyes have been opened to the understanding that only Jesus, that he loves them, that he cares for them, and he's saving them. So you will join them wherever you are, just from your heart. I know you believe. I know you, be I know you believe. The Holy Spirit is telling me that you believe. So this is the time for him to... Now we'll pray a short prayer. It will look simple, but I'm sh you will see a miracle. All the pain in your heart will just go. All the shame, the fear. I pray for you. Just lift your voice, all of you here, and begin to talk to him. No, don't forget, no fear, no shame. Tell him of those mistakes and those pain. Those secret things in your life, in your heart, that keeps you worried. That keeps you disturbed. You can confess that sin to him now. And say, Lord, this thing has been disturbing me for 20 years. I am sorry I did this thing. I need the blood to cleanse me now. I need the blood to cleanse me now. He would dwell in the midst of the cherubims. Try for Go ahead. Speak to him. In the name of Jesus, I kneel with my brothers and sisters before you, Heavenly Father. And I ask that you hear our prayers. Lord, I pray you are the love of our life, our burden bearer. You went on the cross to bear our burdens. We refuse to live in fear and shame when you died for us. We refuse to live in guilt when you took away our sin. Today, me and all these people here, we want to first say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for sending your son Jesus to die for us. Today, we receive his sacrifice. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. thank you for dying for me. Thank you for dying for me. Let your blood cleanse me. Let your blood cleanse I receive me. forgiveness of my sins. I receive forgiveness. Because you died for me, because you died for me. I shall live through you. I shall live you shall live in me. Shall Lord Jesus, take away the mistakes of my past. Take away the, mistakes of the, sins of my past. the sins of my past. Shut the mouth of the accuser by the power of your blood. Forgive me for my mistakes. Forgive me for my I repent of my sin. I repent of my transgression. I repent of my, transgression. I repent of my iniquity. I repent of my, I repent of my abominations. I repent of my abominations. Today, Today, I am before you, Lord. I am before you, Lord. I acknowledge you I am really as the only Lord, as the only, Lord, the only God, the only, God, the only Savior, the only, Savior, the only, Redeemer, the only Redeemer, the Son of God, the Son of God, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you for your mercy for me. Thank you for your mercy. For Take me. away this burden from my heart. Take away this burden from my heart. Make me new. Mm. Give me peace. Give me peace. And joy. And joy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you. I just ask one thing for you, my dear Father. Take away the burden. Take away the fear. Take away the shame. And today, any spirit that uses your past to torment you, I shut their mouth with the blood of Jesus. 
I declare your past is over. Amen. And let me even say something ahead. Whatever mistake you did in the past that Satan wants to use to destroy your future or your present, it will not work again. Amen. You are released from your past. Amen. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Congratulations. God bless you. He would dwell in the midst of the cherubims. Shine forth.